Yo guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Today we're doing another DIY, but instead of working on pants, we're working on a kimono. Now someone in the comments suggested that I make a kimono out of wool, but I don't got wool and I'm pretty sure it's kind of expensive to buy by itself. So I had this kimono right here that I got from Killian a while back that I don't wear anymore. So I figured, you know what? Let's just make this into like a patchwork kimono. You know, I figured I'd do something a little bit different. And ever since I found out about Sashiko and Boro stitching from the Undercover 85 Dem DIY I did, I've been like completely obsessed with that process. I think that look, just the look of it looks, it looks so good. <laughs> that tattered, like kind of grunge, not really grunge, like just tattered and recycled look. So clean, I wish I had a saddle stitch machine, but that thing is way too expensive. But in this DIY, I will incorporate a bunch of Boro stitching and maybe some Sashiko stitchings as well. If it doesn't turn out that great, honestly, that's okay because it's just gonna be like a learning experience for me. And if anything, maybe it'll look better that it's not perfect, you know what I mean? Yo, we're working on something other than pants for once. Instead of buying a template for a kimono, I ended up using this kimono that I bought from Killian a while back that I don't wear anymore to be used as the base layer. It has a more fitted fit than a typical kimono, especially in the sleeves, and the front can't really be pulled together. Because this was my first time deconstructing a top garment, I took multiple pictures of the seams on the outside as well as on the inside, just in case I forgot how to put the pieces back together in the end when I got to that step, and I tell you, it came in clutch. So the plan for this DIY is to make a patchwork design with Boro inspired stitchings to hold it together. Now I could have just patched the panel straight onto the kimono without taking it apart, but I figured it'd be a wasted educational opportunity if I skipped the deconstruction and reconstruction steps and it would look more clean if I took it apart. So that's what I did. I took apart all of the seams, separating all of the kimono panels. In total, there were four panels for the sleeves, two for the front, one for the back, and then one for the lapel. Afterwards, I ironed the seams flat for each panel to make it easier to work with and to straighten out any creases. For the materials I used, they were all clothes that were either scraps from previous DIYs or from stuff I don't wear anymore. I tried to use pieces that were more on the darker side with a little bit of contrast, but honestly, picking out random ones would probably work too. Just like the kimono, I started taking apart the fabrics into big pieces that could be easily cut up into different size patches. I didn't know how to go about this at first, so I figured I'd just start on the biggest panel and just started placing different panels in different areas. Areas, making sure that I added inconsistent layering. Ideally, it would have looked more clean if I sewed the panels together into the shape of the panel I was working on to make clean seams and then add patches to that. But this be my first time, I knew that it would take me so long to do that. I decided to just sew them straight onto the back panel. I'll probably just do that next time. Once I liked each panel's placement, I pinned them down to ready them to be sewn in. The thread I decided to use was this natural colored size 10 crochet thread because I wanted the thread to be seen and I think it looks better than if I use regular sewing thread. With a yardstick and white chalk, I drew a line from top to bottom to be used as a guideline for when I started hand stitching. Originally, I was just going to make a bunch of vertical stitches, but I made a poll on Instagram and y'all said I should make some horizontal stitches as well, so I did. And fun fact, the method of hand stitching I did was apparently the Japanese way of hand sewing, where I thread the needle multiple times through the fabric along the line I drew, and then pulled it through after about three stitches. The western way is to thread the needle one time and then pull the needle through, which isn't really that efficient for this specific DIY since I had to hand sew a lot. Once I got to the end, I tied a knot in the thread and then started a new one. The pockets were ugly and small, so I just removed them, but doing so left a hole in that area which was easily fixed by just using the pocket I cut out, ironing the creases, and then sewing it back onto the fabric as a repair panel to cover up the hole. It's okay that the hole is exposed on one side because on the ugly side, it'll be covered up with the patchwork anyways. The patchwork was basically the same for each panel. I made sure that they weren't too symmetrical, there wasn't one of the same fabric right next to each other, and they covered the whole base layer panel. You can also have them stick off the panel if you want. I plan to wear these inside out too, so so having some rough seams helps with the aesthetic I'm going for. I just want to recommend having too much sticking out and when the patches are pinned in place, I use a rotary cutter to make the edges flush with the base layer. Just like the back layer, I hand stitch the patches from top to bottom as well as from side to side and as you can tell, there was a lot of hand stitching involved. I then repeated this whole process for the other panels. The sleeves consisted of two panels, so when putting them back together, I made sure to line up the corners and started the pinning from there. When the seam was sewn, I flipped the sleeve over to the rough seam side and ironed the folds down. Now you probably thought I was done with the sleeves, but nope. Since there wasn't much seam allowance, it's only the seam thread holding it together. So to secure it, I hand stitched the seam to add more security. And I did this for every seam. Now it was a lot of work, 
but you know, in the end, it actually looks really dope. For the lapel, I decided to just have each patch beside each other rather than overlapping or cutting of small pieces. This way, it'll make the lapel stand out a bit more from the rest of the kimono, kind of like a trimming. I hand stitched each fabric just at the ends to secure them, folded the fabric together, and then ironed it to make a fold crease. Now that every panel is done, it's time to put everything back together. The key thing here is to make sure that the ends of each fabric were pinned correctly together, otherwise the kimono will just be uneven. But for the most part, it's pretty much the same step so the seam, flip it over and iron it down, and then hand stitch the seam to strengthen it. For the lapel, I sew the ends while it was inverted so that when you flip it back, you have this clean edge and corner. I did this for both ends. When attaching it to the kimono, I only sewed down the side that's touching the front of the kimono panel to make a clean seam. And then I hand stitched the other side down after ironing it. Now last but not least, I folded the hems at the bottom of the kimono, hand stitched and ironed them together, and we're done. But there you guys have it. That is the kimono that I made. Not really from scratch. They have a base layer, but it's kind of from scratch. You know what I mean? I got a bunch of scrap material. There's the kimono. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. Now for me personally, I'm not really feeling the sleeves too much. Like if I were to recreate it, I would try to make the sleeves like a lot more wider, kind of like an average kimono. And then maybe even like the torso area, make it be able to you know, to close <laughs> because it's not really able to. I mean, you can obviously, but it's just gonna be a little tight. Now, one other thing I would change is the materials that I use. It'd be a lot better if they're more consistent with each other, or in other words, like they're they're based on the same material. Like if they're all like denim or canvas even, that'd be best. I mean, you can't really tell or feel the difference when you have the kimono on. I think just me being a little picky about it. Now, I will not lie, I do like the reverse side, like the olive side a lot better than the patchwork side. I think it just looks a lot more clean. I don't know, maybe I should have like incorporated more like lighter fabrics, lighter patterns. Now, if I were to rate this, I give this a nine and a half. <laughs> I mean, I said all that stuff, all those like, I guess you can say negative things about the kimono. But in the end, this is my first time ever working on a top garment, especially like at this caliber, you know what I'm saying? Like all of this is hand sewn, basically all these stitches. And it all worked out in the end. The kimono isn't uneven. It looks still like a kimono when I do have it on. I don't think I'll ever sell this, mainly because it's the first time I ever made something like this. I'll just have it like a keepsake, you know what I mean? But again, let me know what you guys think about this kimono in the comments down below. You guys like it? You guys don't like it. What would you change about it? Stuff like that. What kind of patterns would you put together? That'd be kind of cool too. But yo, this process took a long time. Longer than the freaking Undercover 85s. Uh. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like. Hit that sub button too. I'm almost at 3,000. That was so fast. What the hell? And also, as per request, I did make a Discord. So if you guys are into like DIYs, into streetwear, you know, you guys like posting your fits or whatever, join my Discord, check it out. Honestly, I don't really know how it works because I, I never really had a Discord before, but I'm figuring it out, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.